May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive each and every one of us our sins and grant us al jannah bi ghayri hisab. Those who are sick amongst us, amongst the Muslim ummah, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala cure them. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us live, die, and be raised the day of judgment as pious Muslims. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make our best day is the day we're going to meet Him, Ya Allah. And my dear brothers and sisters, welcome to the North Bricks and Islamic Cultural Center for another episode um, of our weekly sessions or lectures here in London. My humble Sheikh, Sheikh Dr. Faisal Buadi, was talking about the manners of Manavism, the character of um, the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and how they worship Allah in different way. The creation worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in different manners. So the Sheikh said we should go to chapter 16, Surah Nahal, chapter 16, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We're going to look at um, verse 48 to verse 55. As usual, I will recite the ayat and narrate to you the nutshell meaning that we go to the Sheikh. Bi idhni lahi ta'ala. A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytani ar-rajim. Bismillahi ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. أَوَلَمْ يَرَوْا إِلَى مَا خَلَقَ اللَّهُ مِنْ شَيْءٍ يَتَفَيَّأُ ظِلَالُهُ يَتَفَيَّأُ ظِلَالُهُ عَنِ الْيَمِينِ وَعَنِ الشَّمَائِلِ سُجَّدًا لِلَّهِ يَتَفَيَّأُ ظِلَالُهُ عَنِ الْيَمِينِ وَعَنِ الشَّمَائِلِ سُجَّدًا لِلَّهِ وَهُمْ دَاخِرُونَ وَلِلَّهِ يَسْجُدُ مَا فِي السَّمَاوَاتِ وَمَا فِي الْأَرْضِ وَلِلَّهِ يَسْجُدُ مَا فِي السَّمَاوَاتِ وَمَا فِي الْأَرْضِ مِنْ دَابَّةٍ مِنْ دَابَّةٍ وَالْمَلَائِكَةُ وَهُمْ لَا يَسْتَكْبِرُونَ يَخَافُونَ رَبَّهُمْ مِنْ فَوْقِهِمْ وَيَفْعَلُونَ مَا يُؤْمَرُونَ الله الله أكبر وقال الله لا تنتخذوا إلى حين اثنين إنما هو إله واحد إنما هو إله واحد فإيا يفرهبون وله ما في السماوات والأرض وله الدين وعصبا أفغير الله تنتقون وما بكم من نعمة فمن الله ثم إذا مسكم الدر فإليه تجأرون ثم إذا كشف الدر عنكم إذا فريق منكم بربهم يشركون ليكفروا بما آتيناهم فتمنتعوا فسوف تعلمون Allah says, أَوَلَمْ يَرَوْا إِلَى مَا خَلَقَ اللَّهُ مِنْ شَيْءٍ Do they not look at Allah's creation amongst all things? يَتَفَيَّعُ ذِلَالُهُ Allah said, how the shadows turn around. Subhanallah. Your shadow. The shadow of the trees and all the creation, the things that Allah created. Allah said, look how the shadow turns around. Anil from the right, was shama'in, and from the left, sujjada, prostrating themselves, lillah, to Allah. The shadow prostrating themselves to Allah, subhanallah. 
وهم داخرون they do that in the humblest manner سبحان الله الله أكبر الله سيد ولله يسجد ما في السماوات وما في الأرض and to Allah all that is in the sky above and the earth below prostrate in worship من داب out of his creatures the moving creatures والملائكة as well as the angels as well وهم لا يستكبرون they do not become arrogant when it comes to the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala they submit themselves subhanallah Allah said as the shaykh asked why because يخافون ربهم من فوقهم they fear their Lord Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the high above them they fear Allah وَيَفْعَلُونَ مَا يُعْمَرُونَ And they do exactly as they are told or commanded. Subhanallah. وَقَالَ اللَّهِ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, command you, order you, لَا تَتَّخِذُوا إِلَى هَيْنِ اثْنِينَ Do not take besides him another God. Do not worship Juju or whatever it is. Only Allah. Allah said, إِنَّمَا هُوَ إِلَاهٌ وَاحِدٌ Your Lord, your God is one, only one God. Allah said, فَإِيَّاي فَرْهَبُونَ Only me, you must fear. Allah said, only him, you should fear alone. Only Allah. Don't fear anyone except Allah. وَلَهُ مَا فِي السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ To him belong all that is in the sky above and the earth below. وَلَهُ الدِّينِ وَاصِبًا So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala He said belong of course the religion To him belong the religion all the time always So only Allah you should fear Subhanallah And Allah continue وَمَا بِكُمْ مِنْ نِعْمَةٍ فَمِنَ اللَّهِ Oh sorry أَفَغَيْرَ اللَّهِ تَتَّقُونَ then do you after all this Allah said he owns all the all that is in sky above and the earth below and to him belong the religion always so besides Allah would you fear anyone besides Allah or then will you fear another than Allah no you shouldn't وَمَا بِكُمْ مِنْ نِعْمَةٍ فَمِنَ اللَّهِ whatever good fortune you achieve you earn is from Allah Wallahi no one else give it to you except Allah ثُمَّ إِذَا مَسَّكُمُ الدُّرُّ and when distress misfortune touch you overtake you فَإِلَيْهِ تَجْأَرُونَ you run unto him cry with grunts you cry to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Allah please Allah help me Allah do this it's to Allah you cry when you face difficulties I remember at one time the sheikh was saying even the kafir the non-believer if they are in the plane for example the plane is about to fall down what happens who did they call what did they say oh my god they say it and they said they don't believe in God but they say oh my god 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 because it is within that instinct ثم إذا كشف الدور عنكم الله said but when he removes the distress from you إذا فريق منكم بربهم يشركون behold some of you that's the time they join Allah with the partner saying had he not been a pilot was a good pilot would have crushed they forgot that Allah saved them hey Allah Akbar had it not been because of the terrorist man I'm having here, would have crushed. Had it not been because of this, mashallah, if not the driver was, mashallah, very skillful, would have got accident today. He forgot or she forgot that only Allah saved him from what he went through, he was going to go through. Hey, subhanallah. Man is ungrateful, huh? And very quick to forget. Allah said, 
لِيَكْفُرُوا بِمَا آتَيْنَاهُمْ And at that moment, they become ungrateful, in other words, ingratitude towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's favor. They become ungrateful to Allah. Allah said, فَتَمَتَّعُوا Then enjoy, no problem. For a little while, do whatever you want to do. Mm. Enjoy the brief of your day. <laughs> Do whatever you wish to do. But however, فَسَوْفَ تَعْلَمُونَ Very soon, you will know. Subhanallah. Very soon, you will know. May Allah save us from his chastisements, this world and the hereafter. May the brothers and sisters, this is the nutshell of, uh, meaning of the ayat I have recited without much ado. I'll pass the mic now to the Yomul Sheikh. Faleta Fadala Sheikh Mashkura. Well, mashallah, look at this inanimate things that you think. The mountains, the trees, sometimes you become so tired, especially during the summertime, when you get the tree, under the tree, the shade, so oh, let me rest here, and so forth. You don't even say bismillah, you don't remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Whereas that tree is prostrating to Allah while you are sleeping, enjoying the shade of that tree. SubhanAllah. This is something you have to learn. Because as you can see, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has said everything. In admittance, as the Prophet had said, I used to see, and I still can know, the stone or rock that he used to give me salam in Mecca whenever I pass by. Look. And you know the story. When Prophet went to Medina and he had his place as masjid and that palm tree, the stuff of it, whenever he is making the khutbah or is, uh, saying anything, he used to lean against it. The day that the lady said, Oh, Master of Allah, let me make member for you. Look, the lady said, Master of Allah, let me make a member for you. He said, Oh, you say yes. He said, Professor Asma said, Okay, go ahead. So she made very nice member for Professor Allah. So on Friday, the member was brought. Professor Asma went to give the khutbah. And when he started to give the khutbah, because now he is sitting, standing on that member, that palm tree started to cry. Crying like a baby that everybody can hear in the masjid. And the Prophet has to stop and came and put his hand on it. He said, no. It's enough, it's enough. And then he was stopping like a little baby when the mother is, uh, you know, making the baby to sleep up and so forth. Professor Masama said it was crying because it was missing that blessing that he used to get. Look, when I used to stand by itself, and now I am now standing distant. Look at it. SubhanAllah, you become afraid of everything, but you forget to become afraid of the one who created it, isn't it? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So everything frustrates to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, whether you like it or not, except mankind. Some of them, as Allah had said, you do make shirk. When the time comes, oh, can it not be because of this thing? You know, especially in Africa and other places, they will have talisman sometimes around their hands, some of them around their waist, some of them around their neck. I mean, the ladies even have something like that. I mean, the ladies, they have some, you know? And he said, oh, had it not been because of this, oh, today I will have finished. 
But by that time, he did not call this one. When he was in that trouble, he was only calling Allah. But as soon as he came out of it, he started to give all the credit to that thing, making shirk. So this is one of the things we as believers, we should not do it. Now, the next aspect of uh, life that you have to bear in mind, as Allah had said, the same su uh, Surah 24 that you are doing, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala informs us about different aspects that you have to bear in mind about. He said, can't you see every created things, all the Dharma, the creeping creatures, including mankind, the animals, the genes, all of them, they prostrate and they also praises Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. All of them praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Okay. In the first ayahs that you spoke about, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala linked the trees and everything, their prostrations, their praises of Allah, their worship, to that of the worship of the angels. All of them, they are afraid of Allah, except man who is enjoying himself with all these facilities that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given to us. That he should not forget. So many times he said, oh, I, I am this, I am that, I am so... No. We have to humble ourselves. If these things can humble themselves to worship Allah, we must humble ourselves. Isn't it? Yes, because we are all naked to the earth. The day we came to this world, you were naked, isn't it? Yes. You go back, and when you be raised up again, you come out naked. Like the day you were born. Okay. So, why are you not becoming very humble? You become so, of course, and bitterness. You know, I hated this one, I hate that one. All this bitterness in our hearts. It is too much. How many fishes can you carry in your hand? If you have fishes here and you want you to carry them, to take some with you home, how many can you carry? Fish. How many? I said fish, fish. You have fish and you need to carry them. And then they have more. I say, everybody, come and take. Fish, how many can you carry? You carry In whatever thing you can. How many do you think you can carry with you? To you take it home. It depends on the size of the fish. Okay. If it's Mina, it's Boku. She is in Missing Africa. The small fish you can take as much. Uh huh. The hair. You can scoop. You can scoop. Yeah, scoop. It's a small, those tiny ones. What about, what about this, you know, the herrings and so forth? Uh, how many? How many can you carry? Only one? No, no. We have a family. He said, take. Not how much you want. Not box. It's there like that. It is there, plenty. Or you take in your hands. How many can you? No. He said, carry them to your house. How many do you think you can carry with you? With your hands. You can take more than 20. You can carry more than 20. MashaAllah. Anybody else? How many can you carry? Two kuta. All right. MashaAllah. Now, how many can you carry? Yes, how many? How many? Two. Two. Only two? It don't, be, don't be like a treasurer. The treasurer said he will carry the hands and then put one on the head. And the other one on the back going like that. MashaAllah. Very good. Some of them say 20, 10, 5, 6. If you are asked to carry that for one week without dropping them, can you do it? Yes, one week. You are carrying that fish that you have for one week with the smell. And everything. 
for one week. Can you do it? No. You can't? No. Well, then that is the bitterness, the hate you have in your heart. It smells more than that you have against your brother or sister. So if this rotten fish, you, can, you cannot carry it for one week. How are you carrying this bitterness in your heart every day? Why? Why are you doing that? Take it away so you get more storage for what? For good things, isn't it? Yes. Take it away. Because it does not help you. It kills you. Isn't it? Yes. So this is one thing you have to bear in mind. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has said, we should not take two ilah, isn't it? Two gods. Besides, it means a believer, you cannot have two gods in your heart. The love of this world and the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, both of them cannot stay in the same heart. Isn't it? Either you choose this one or you choose the other one. And you know the woman who went to the court and told the court that, look, the judge, I want you to have this divorce for me, to divorce my husband. No, I said, why, why is that you want to divorce the husband? He said, no, I just want, I cannot stay with this man again anymore. I want to divorce. When the husband was brought, and he said, oh, I didn't do anything bad to this woman. I love her too much. I do everything for her. She said, yes, that's the reason why I want to divorce you. I'm asking divorce from you. Said, what kind of problem is this? Huh? Didn't I give you everything? I take you to overseas, abroad, and enjoy yourself. I bought so many things for you. And he said, yes, that is the main reason I want to divorce from you. Allah, subhanAllah, this woman. He said, look, didn't I abandon even my family just for you? For your sake. He said, yeah, that's the main, main reason I want to divorce from you. So the judge said, why? He said, this man, he had given preference to me over his mom. He gives me everything, but he abandons his mom, who carried him for nine months and waiting for two years. Took care of him, educated him, and now he has given that preference to me over his mom. He said, if he can turn his back against the womb that born him, he will do that to me. I'm not waiting for the day he will turn his back against me. So I want a divorce from him. He said, please, I will change. You say no. He said, the only thing you can do, go back to your mom. And that preference you gave it to me, go and give it back to her. That is your expiation of your sins. He said, look, he said, oh, please, I will do everything. He said, why is that you are doing this? Thing? I'm saving you from the hellfire, you know? You are just at the pit of hell. You are going inside there by abandoning your mom and giving preference to your wife. You see, you are entering into hellfire. When the Prophet Sama said you can get a jannah from where? Huh? He didn't say from our wives, isn't it? And this is the, and this is the mother you have abandoned. So if you don't get a jannah, where are you going to? That's why he said, I'm saving you, but you still want to go. You want to go inside the fire. <laughs> you see? That is it. It's the love of Allah. 
How many of you will do that? Your husband gives you everything, tell you where and there and so for the holidays and everything. And then you will say that, look, because of that, I'm going to divorce you. You are in the message, you know, don't put your hand up. <laughs> Nobody will do that, they isn't it? <laughs> Nobody will do that. But that they will say, let me take from what I have. Yes. You know? Or even if you become very angry, why are you all the time sending this to your mom and so on and so forth? But a believer, you should give preference. Your love for Allah has to overcome everything. This is what you need to do. So, Allah said, don't take two ilah. Don't love this world and also loving Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala at the same time. It is not possible. It's not possible. Because this pot of water and fire, they cannot stay together. Can they? If you put fire inside, like a charcoal or anything, with fire inside this, and it has water inside it. Can they stay together? No. What will happen? One will take over the other, isn't it? Yes. So likewise, a believer, you must have the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for everything that you have in this world more than anything else. So here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala spoke about the hypocrites. How these hypocrites, when they come to you, they say, oh, you believe in Allah, you believe in his messenger and so forth. But when it comes in terms of the issues that Allah said this, or his messenger said that, they said, oh, no, no, no. Then they turn away. And this is what you, most of the time you do. When it comes to our culture, our uh, traditions, our customs, no, no, no. Even the person you say, no, but you know this is our custom, you have been doing this in for how many years, and our forefathers and so forth. SubhanAllah. Allah is saying this, his messenger said that. He said, yes, I know, but you see, this is what our forefathers have been doing and so on and so forth. A believer should not do that. A believer, when you hear anything, what are you supposed to say? Sami'na wa a'fa'na. You heard and we obey. So, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, ayah 52, in Surah Al-Nur, He said, oh, no, no, ayah 51, He said, إِنَّمَا كَيْنَا قَوْلَ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ إِذَا دُعُوا إِنَ اللَّهِ وَرَسُولِهِ لِيَحْمَ بَيْنَهُمْ أَنْ يَكُونُوا سَمِعْنَا وَعَطَانَا فَأُولَٰئِكَ هُمُ الْمُفْلِحُونَ This is supposed to be the etiquette of a believer. Yes, whenever they have any issue about anything, if he said, look, this is what Allah had said, this is what his messenger had said, he said, well, we heard and then you obey. Allah said, they will be the successful ones. Because, Allah has given us the choice here. Whosoever obeys Allah, and obeys his messenger and fears Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and protects himself or herself from the anger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala these are the ones who will be the successful ones may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us of them so a believer should all the time bear this thing in your mind that anything you have in this world you are going to leave them here anything because you are just Khalifa. Khalifa means what? What is the meaning of Khalifa? What? Someone said Khalifa is transit. The other one says stranger. The other one says the one who lives for Allah. And a traveler. <laughs> 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 when Allah said that I'm going to 
Who the Khalifa? Khalifa on the earth. Caretaker. 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 Mm. It means the people you are not going to stay for for good all the time. Somebody will come and inherit, take over you. It's like the house that you go to. Oh, today they gave me this house and so forth. You are so happy. Somebody was there. Maybe the person was not even happy in that place. And he has left. And you are so happy there. <laughs> he gave you now, you are so happy jumping, calling this one and that one and so forth. But the one who was there, he thought he even enjoyed it. He didn't want it. So yeah, he wants to even move. Okay? So this is how this world is. No matter what everything you have, there were some people before you who had more than what you have. So you have to humble yourself. And if you are all, as I always said, you are all visitors on this earth. And every visitor has to go to her. His home or his country, isn't it? Yes. And what is our country? Where did you come from? Huh? Al Jannah. That's where you come from. That's our home. You came here, you are visitors. The Surah has said, Hatta Zurutu Numakari. Iziara. Visit. And everybody who will visit some place, but always he will go to. So a day will come when you visit that grave, you go inside there, you become visitors in the grave. And as a visitor, one day you have to be taken out. And that's how, where your destination will be, either in the Jannah or in here. This is how Allah has made it. May Allah save us. Ya so you should not forget, you should always remember Allah and praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You remember subhanallah wa bihamdihi adada khalqihi. Everybody knows, isn't it? Alright, say it, let him hear. Yeah. Uh-huh. Adada. Adada. Khalqihi. Mm-hmm. This was the eighty to chicken and chips. <laughs> hey, London, too much chicken and chips. Subhanallah, Subhanallah, wa bihamdihi, adad khulqihi. ورضا نفسه وزنة عرشه ومداد كلماته. Very important dua. Can you say it again? سبحان الله وبحمده عدد خلقه ورضا نفسه وزنة عرشه. وميداد كلماتي. أكى كان يسأل ناوها. سبحان الله وبحمده. Mashallah, who can tell us the meaning? Who can volunteer? <laughs> Probably, I'm asking you to volunteer. <laughs> no, he had it. Subhanallah, he will be happy. What does he mean? Glory be to Allah. And to him belong all what? All praise. I did the khalaqi. And in all his creations. Uh huh. According to the number of his creation. Waridu nafsihi. Okay, who can go for that one? Worry, 
Nafsi hii Pleasant According to the way he plays He's pleasant yeah Okay and then the next one Wazinata Arushihi According to what uh -huh, His throne but what What's about his throne The weight of his throne Wa wa midada kalimati and the ink what? The ink of his words. MashaAllah. May Allah accept his words. لا يزال الخير حيا لا يزال إن في الدنيا سنة.